Welcome to another unboxing. So this time we have Household, an RPG by Two Little Mice. And you may have heard Two Little Mice, uh, I think they were partnered with Come On for a short time, right in the midst or right prior to this Kickstarter. And then they separated again. <laughs> so Two Little Mice took the rights back for uh, this game. And then they also had another Kickstarter, I believe back in May of this year for Outgunned, an action, uh, an action uh, RPG, kind of action movie themed. So this is not gonna be to everyone's taste. This is household and it's about littlings. So kind of tiny people living in a, in a house. And because the house is so large, you know, similar to um, uh, some of the uh, kids entertainment, the little ones, uh, I'm trying to think of, there's, there's been several. Uh, kid stories based on you know tiny people living in a house uh either abandoned or with uh, large humans so i think the ghibli movie uh, uh, ariete uh was uh based on that same sort of story a tiny person so this is the mouse rider pledge for their kickstarter and the production values look really nice on this the one thing i'm not in love with though is they made this is just a box to contain all of the stretch goals and extras and as you can see it's a little bit different color <laughs> and it's a little bit different size but then maybe because of the size requirements for the maps or whatever's in here so they may have had to do some uh something a little bit different but that's too bad they don't look that great side by side i mean they're not you know not perfect um and this is just a box with a lid so they've recreated the same effect giving you the the kind of yellowed page ends um, but as you can see, this is just a box with a lid on it, whereas this is a, a magnetized case for their volumes. So we'll set this aside and take a look. So Household RPG by Two Little Mice. So frustrating uh, for me was uh, how this got <laughs> how this got from the UK. Uh, so I'm gonna keep. I've had a string of bad luck, so I'm gonna keep telling these stupid stories. Uh, this was listed as, so it's the bookcase edition, like it's, a, it's supposed to look like a book. So it's a bookcase edition and it's, uh, uh, called household. So the, uh, <laughs> importation documents, uh, said, uh, household bookcase. And then the category was wooden furniture to be used in office. So <laughs> I was charged a duty as if I had ordered wooden furniture. Uh, yeah, so that, that didn't work out quite so. I don't think I would have been hit with the import had that mistake not been made. So this is <laughs> wooden household furniture to be used in office. Actually, it weighs, it weighs enough. There's three volumes in here, so this thing weighs a ton. So let's take a look at how they did with the production. The, uh, the samples of the artwork and things on the uh, uh, Kickstarter page were just gorgeous. They did a uh, Broken Compass uh, RPG, which won some awards. And I think that was in, in, in uh, when they were affiliated with Come On. And now they're back on their own and Household is all of theirs. So they finished the fulfillment on this Kickstarter and shipped it. And right away, you can see the gold right there on the front. That was a stretch goal as well. And uh, so Household, so volume one, Opera Omnia. Omnia. So they did a nice job. This has a nice kind of uh, satin touch to it. For the house is big, and these are such small matters. Household RPG. So it's got a yeah, magnetized catch on it. Nice. And there's some artwork, the simulated end papers. And then it opens on the side like this. So I think we have the uh, GM screen and then the three books. So uh, Household Volume 1 is their core rule book. A Practical Guide to Living Inside the House is more... Uh, more rules and uh, expansions of areas of the house and then i believe this is the adventure book a saga of the fragile peace so let's take a look yeah so far beautiful really uh, nice production and very well done so as i said i'm sure there's a lot of people that aren't going to be <laughs> super excited by this this was really tempting i mean i really wanted to see their production quality and also i was uh uh, very interested in finding something that uh, a teenage daughter might be interested in for role play, something a little gentler and a little different. So right off, let's take a look at the map of the house. So this will give you a sense of what they're trying to do. So this is just a simple kind of light coat on a, uh, a paper map. It's not super durable, but it'll work. 
uh, it'll work for presenting the locations. And so they break up the, uh, the areas of the house this way. So three, three stories. It looks like we've got a, uh, a basement, a first floor and a second floor with bedrooms and such. And then on the back <laughs> we have, oh, nice. So this is the scale, you know, this is like a wrapper for caramel candy, but of the scale <laughs> of the, uh, so the map was drawn on the back of a uh, caramel wrapper. That's really cute. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of that stuff. So hold on. You might, you may need to click away <laughs> if this isn't your thing. This may be a little too cute for, uh, for some people, but the production values are just, just gorgeous. And I love the, you know, the scale threat. So of course, you know, mice and beetles are terrifying opponents uh, in a world of this scale. So there's our map of the household. And then our GM screen. And you can see right away some of the uh, the great art. So there's a, a bunch of uh, NPCs or uh, pre-gen characters in here to kind of give you a feel of the different factions. And they did a series because they were working with Kaman at one time. I think that was probably the big motivation for it. But they have a uh, considerable number of miniatures that they produced for this Kickstarter as well. I didn't go in heavy on that. I just really wanted to see the books and the rules looked interesting and, and pretty uh, straightforward and simple. So yeah, we've got uh, conditions, helps and hindrances, aces up your sleeve. So you have playing cards, uh, the uh, suits of uh, playing cards are used as well uh, with the D6s. Rolls, difficulty, failure, stress, combat, shooting, brawl, and duel. And so here's your basic uh, successes. So two hearts, a success, or I guess a pair. Three is a critical success, four is an extreme success, <laughs> five is an impossible success, and six of the uh, icons, the household icons, is a jackpot. So using kind of gambling terms. But uh, yeah, this is really Really nicely done in a horizontal orientation as well. So let's start with our rule book. Wow, yeah, so the uh, the gold effect is really nice on these books. Looks great. Yeah, they couldn't continue with all the detail on the on the magnetized box itself, but the books themselves are beautiful. Really nice. Okay, so here's our core rule book. Yeah, just absolutely, it's an Italian studio. So their artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the production is really nice. Yeah, so this has kind of that uh, a slightly um, rubberized touch, like it's got a, a texture on it that kind of grabs a bit. So it's not, even though it looks like a fabric print, it's not actually fabric, it's got a, uh, it's got a texture to it, kind of one of those uh, coated rubberized textures. So this is from the back of the rule book. A hundred years have passed since the master left his house, and now the little folk have returned to claim the household. Strong bogards in the hearth, the refined fairies of the garden, ingenious sprites on the upper floors, and the daring slough of the horde, down in the basement. We have finally reached an agreement and given way to a fragile peace. Household history is being made. Among old disagreements, new alliances, great revolutions, every littling, no matter how small, has the power to change the world. So temper your pins and sharpen your scissors. Wear your best suits and bridle your mice. We're going on a tiny adventure. <laughs> and so household role-playing game, filled with adventure, intrigue, and social interactions, set in a large abandoned house. It takes, a, it takes place in a world that resembles 19th century Europe, in which each room constitutes a proper nation you can explore. The players will take the roles of littlelings, tiny people who belong to the little folk of European folklore. You will go on a tiny great, and you will go on tiny great adventures together. Yeah, so very heroic role play looking, but on a very tiny scale. So yeah, very nice production. So household adjective before noun, relating to a house. <laughs> house is a place where people live in, just in case you were, you were wondering. Nice. Yeah, so this is written and developed by uh, Ricardo Cirinano and uh, Simone Formicola. So they're the, I think, the founders of uh, Two Little Mice. 
And so they made the announcement both of joining and then leaving. Come on. And uh, yeah, beautiful art direction in this book. So very nice. So let's take, oh, and a nice, a nice finish on these pages. Nice and smooth. I'm getting very tired of unfinished, very, you know, low. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing it for uh, ecological reasons, but very low quality. This is, these are nice coded pages. They have a really nice feel to them. So folks and nations, and so all the fairy folks, your character, professions, how to play, contracts, equipment, household history, saga, the house, and then appendices. So here's the preface. Readers beware. These pages are the only two in the <laughs> are the only two in this book written by a human like you, written by me. Because of this. Because this was written by the little folk for the little folk. Let me explain. Oh, very nice. So they're they're very they're leaning very hard <laughs> into the setting. And so everything in this uh, in this book itself was written by the little folk. So these two pages describing what you're <laughs> about to see. <laughs> nice. So of course the the required what is a role play role playing game nice oh and they're yeah so they're actually um, giving a history interesting so like a first person account of uh, of this history nice so household is a role playing game I think we've read that introduction yes um, so it takes place in a world that resembles the first years of our 19th century in which each room constitutes a proper nation yes and the little folk yeah that was from the back so what are we playing so playing little ling little little <laughs> lings and uh there's five chapters each representing one year of household of history in the household the game mostly focuses on the characters and their relationships and the linear or non-linear growth so during each chapter some historical events will take place changing each house and its inhabitants forever, possibly interfering to varying degrees with a character's story. So typical adventures in a household can be investigating the disappearance of a precious bumblebee, taking part in a great ball on the chandelier, exploring the lair of, of a spider, crossing the long hallway and facing its pitfalls, and going on a mission for the Sultan of Piping. Okay, so tiny meters. So we have no way of knowing how tall littlings are or how big the house truly is, what we know is that l the little folks measure everything in tiny meters <laughs> of measurement that is, alas, unknown to us this day. As such, we decided to consider that for littlelings, a, a tiny meter is about as large as a meter is to humans. It's either to live, it's easier to live with a lack of clarity than to try to cram an unsizely unit of measurement into a tiny world. So the household uh, is played with a game engine that uses small pools of six-sided dice to determine the outcome of many tasks that may entail risks and can lead to memorable consequences. When rolling dice in the household, your goal isn't to roll the highest or lowest possible. To reach success, you have to combine two or more dice with the same results in pairs, three of a kind, and so on. The larger the number of dice at the same side, the greater your success. Household uses custom designed dice that make it easier and faster to spot your successes. Well, these dice are recommended to enhance your gaming experience. They are not a requirement. Nice, look at the mouse riders. <laughs> a fresco painted on the inside of the piano in Blackshire. <laughs> Sorry, in Black Shine. Ah, nice. All right. Oh, yes, yeah, so this is the uh, individual that wrote in first person uh, on the preface here. And so here is a letter from the same. Harasimo J. Hemingway. All right. So Household is the first collaborative universal history book. Yes, I'm proud of that. It's a history book. Oh, so I guess everything is going to be written from his point of view. A littling. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a history book because Household is the first and foremost a retelling of the events that shaped the recent history of the house. It has all the facts, dates, and names, and everything else you'd expect to find in this type of book. It's universal because it has many goings on about how the history was written by winners, but not just that case. History is written every day by every single little ling in every nation throughout the house. It's collaborative because it is much different from other books you may have encountered, much different indeed 
this book you'll understand my pride. In saying this was written to allow everyone a chance to go, to tell the story and even the saga of the littlelings who are largely completely neglected by history. It's the game in a nutshell. So one of you will be the narrator and tasked with setting the scene with secondary characters unraveling a tangle of events. The ideal narrator is a historian graduated from the University of Clockminster. <laughs> well, I guess uh, <laughs> that counts me out. Nice. So your collective goal is to play together and piece together the incredible adventures of the characters that lived inside the house. Nice. I like the how they're terming it as a as retelling a history. That's very fun and thematic, and kind of abstracts it in a in a fun way. The origins of the little folks. Setting your preconceptions aside, you have made, may have met some fairies, seen your fair share of slough, or formed your opinions on them. <laughs> Maybe you have developed preconceptions based on these, those few individuals. <laughs> wow, yeah, just really nice artwork throughout. Yeah, they did a nice job. Yeah, I love the feel of these pages. I haven't felt uh, a nice coat on a, uh, a book in a long time. So here's the fairies faction. It's so all fluff and a nice ribbon. Nice, the Boggarts. Yeah, nice silk ribbon in there. They occupy the hearth. Sprites. Nice. Yeah, really beautiful. And the slough. Looks like the cockroaches in the basement. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I really, I really like the, the theming and look. It, it's not too childish, you know. It's it's got a nice balance between, kind of modern, RPG aesthetics and still the the kind of you know whimsical fantasy that it's trying to portray. The character and how to tell. So the character sheet. So the basic character, creation, name, folk, hereditary contract. Nation, profession, or vocation, field, skill points. So add four skill points, and there's traits and moves. Aces up your sleeve. Wealth and equipment. Decorum, prologue. Choose one memory and choose which language you know. So we've got the four, the four nations. We just flip through, and so your realm would be in the dining hall. Uh, so the realm is the dining hall. The hearth is the living room. The free dominions are on the upper floors, and the horde is in the basement. And your professions are soldier, scholar, hunter, criminal, duelist, and animal handler. Skills and fields. So 20 skills and four fields. So I guess the fields will be the suits. Yeah, right, so the uh, fields would be society, academia, war, and street. So blue diamonds, <laughs> green clovers, <laughs> yellow horseshoes, no, no, and uh, black spades for the streets. So society is red hearts. So traits and moves. So an ace up your sleeve. Yeah, let's see what this. Oh, sorry. So then, so the fields, and then the skills under the fields. Um, so society has art, charm, eloquence, etiquette, and grace. Academia has care, craft, culture, insight, investigation. War has athletics, authority, fight, strength, and will. And street has caution, dexterity, elusive, exploration, and shoot. So aces up your sleeve. So aces are the most valuable resource that you can gain and can, to gain great benefit. There are four aces, one for each card suit, plus a joker. You may play an ace to gain an additional die before a roll to remove a condition from your character or to reuse a move and even make an attempt of turning a failure upside down. Find more information on aces. Nice, so kind of a, uh, yeah, determination or a, uh, a, yeah, a different type of currency to spend. So traits and moves are special talents. For example, big and strong, gain plus one to lift. Fast reload. Nice, so here's the character sheet. I think we're gonna see some pretty printed versions of these. Equipment and wealth, so coins at your disposal, and equipment based on your profession, I'm sure. So decorum is a measure of your elegance or personal hygiene. <laughs> I 
Stress, stress is a measure of your current physical and emotional conditions. And you're broken. Yes, yeah, so they're using a broken mechanic in the game. When you take too much stress, so you can have a maximum of 12 stress. When you exceed this limit, you become overstressed and can even risk having to bow out. So contracts. When choosing a native folk, you immediately gain a hereditary contract. This is ex an extraordinary, almost supernatural power stemming from an ancient deal struck by the forebearers with one of the household forces. The hereditary contracts are fairies have star child, boggards have deer to the hearth, salamander is out of the spark, sylph is out of the draft, undyne is out of the drain, <laughs> and slough is revenant from beyond, from far beyond. So descriptions will be in section five. And the prologue is a short summary of important life events of the character and then experiences and memories. So a prologue memory is a, uh, yeah. So you write down your experiences, your reputation, and your great achievements and physical and metaphorical scars and the bonds you make. So all of these become experience that you can prove as helpful or hindering. You begin the game with no experience, but with one important memory coming from the prologue. Memory is an experience that has taken root with your character. Drawing from your prologue, write a short sentence that encapsulates a pivotal moment in their lives, in the life of your character. As the story progresses, you move from one chapter to, to the next and will make new memories. So some examples, I can always rely on Ernest. I'm an esteemed university professor. I have worked in a bumblebee farm. My heart was broken. Interesting. Yeah, so very, yeah, history and storytelling. You know, they're leaning very heavily on those metaphors. Interesting. Extended sheet. There's an extended character sheet spanning over two pages, which you can find at the end of this volume. The extended sheet looks somewhat like a traveling document carried by the littlings and can be folded in half as a refined passport. And then the languages, Hausian, Fey, Hartish, Sprigalic, Sprigalic and Sluggin. So the Horde, the other freedom. So each, each region of the house has a language. Your character knows at least two languages. And some more fluff. There's looks like there's poems. There's verse between each chapter. And professions. Yeah, so here's the description. And then the, the moves that you have under that profession. So soldier. Gendarm, officer, scissor for hire, first class, cadet. Yes. Oh, I see. And then under each each one of these, you where your skill points lie. Interesting. Scholars. So the scholar moves, and then the different the different types of scholars. And so how you're associated. I see. So these associations or these, um, what do they call them? Fields can be, uh, can go across, you know, all of the different nations. That's nice. They're not refined. And then even within the jobs, uh, you can have professions that have different fields. Hunters. Yeah, really nice. I like, and of course, a nice depiction of the variety of these professions. So, guide, champion, nomad, scout. Criminals, and the criminal moves, and then <laughs> courtesan, cheater, thug, snitch, and duelists. Yeah, really, really gorgeous art throughout. Libertine, hero, virtuoso, and animal handlers. And of course, they get animal companions, which are <laughs> a beetle, a bumblebee, a gecko, or a mouse. Veterinarian, street performer. And then here's the list. Oh yeah, here's the stats for your pets or your animals. Gecko or a mouse. And professional traits. And then traits in general. Acrobat alert, beast master. So giving you Different benefits. So, gifted performer, choose an art form, gain a free reroll when performing your chosen art. And then traits, things like mediator, nail thrower, natural born leader, panache. So, you gain one profession specific trait, 
depending on your profession, and one trait of your choice. Depending on your vocation. Here's our dice that we're looking at with the suits on them. Nice, and they even theme them within the, the uh, there's a little bit of uh, hints of what that affiliation is for that different suit. <laughs> nice. So action roll. So here's the basic mechanics. Here's all the terminology and here's basic uh, mechanics. So you, when you attempt an action with an uncertain outcome, make an action roll. So to evade a gendarme standing at a door, or climbing a wall, or interrogating a little in. So you make a roll. Player states the goal. They explain their approach, and the narrator determines difficulty, adds up the dice, and any modifiers. The player rolls the dice and tallies their successes. So it seems, yeah, very straightforward. D6 die pool. And narrator describes consequences of the roll. So goals and approaches. Before making an action roll, it's important that you define your goal and approach. So what do I want to achieve? How do I want to achieve it? And then deciding the difficulty. So here's the range of difficulty. So basic, critical, extreme, impossible. I think we see, yeah, we saw that on the GM screen. How many successes those require. The dice pool, yeah, th two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, and then the impossible, <laughs> six of a kind jackpot. Even rarer than impossible. And then there's rerolls, free rerolls, and then all in. If after a reroll or a free reroll, you get a better result on your first roll, you can still choose to go all in. This means <laughs> you can roll again all dice that weren't part of the success, uh, much like you would for a normal reroll. If you manage to get even a better or extra success, that becomes the new result. Wow, interesting. However, if you do not get any better or extra successes, you lose all previous successes and face a terrible failure. Very interesting. Yeah, that's a quite a push mechanic. Yeah, so all in means all or nothing. Very interesting. So then the modifiers from your traits, moves, contracts, aces, raising the stakes. Even if you scored a success, the narrator can decide to raise the stakes and invite you to re-roll. Failure, if you don't score the needed successes with the dice roll you and not even after the re-roll, that means you have failed. So negative consequences, success at cost, a different way, and then suffering stress. Extra actions, so you can spend extra successes to take extra actions on your turn. And here's the list of basic and critical actions, giving away a success. When you earn an extra success, you can also choose to give it away to a friend. Reaction rolls, goals and approaches, difficulty of reactions. So when you react promptly to an external event, when someone or something acts against you, you need to avoid an unpleasant circumstance. You may be asked for a reaction roll. Reaction rolls are similar to action with a key difference. But some key differences. The goal and approach is different, and the difficulty different. Hmm, nice. And here's stress. So basic failure, suffer one stress. Critical, three. Extreme, nine. Impossible. Fill in all your successes. You are overstressed. And then overstressed means that... Uh, when, you, when all the free stress boxes are filled in, uh, in, in all confidence, as long as you have at least one empty stress box, you can feel relatively safe. When you're overstressed, you can take no more stress from then on, and you should seriously begin to worry about your health. If for any reason you suffer more stress, you'll have to bow out until the next chapter, unless, your friend, uh, unless one of your friends has a joker that they can use to save you. Damage control, removing stress box bowing out bowing out means your character has reached a point where they are unable to interact with others and with the story this could mean you were found out or caught that you fell down a ravine or got lost in the in-betweens and return to the scene if you had to bow out you can discuss with the narrator how you will return to the scene at the beginning of the next chapter here we go so here's the different fields so society Academia, war. I like, yeah, I like these uh, stylist versions and the street. So 
describing all the skills involved, some moves, and here's more about aces up your sleeve. So you can play an ace and choose one of the following. Gain plus one to your roll, repeat a move, read a condition, or change the approach. Gaining an ace. So you're going to re reward a player with an ace when they score a success against all odds. They have an idea that changes the course of the story. Their actions are absolutely memorable, or they make a great sacrifice. They manage to move everyone. They masterfully interpret their character. They are at the center of an epic scene. They deserve a great reward, or everyone cheers. <laughs> everyone cheers. And uh, here's Joker. So this is, yeah, even more precious than aces. So when you play a Joker, choose one of the following, gain an extreme success, save a friend who is bowed out, remove one condition, or replace an ace by with playing a Joker instead. Jokers can be a reward a player is given uh, by okay, giving them a Joker. Uh, this is similar to giving them an ace as a general rule. You should grant a joker when any other ace would not be enough to properly represent the deeds or successes. So more than everybody cheered. <laughs> so jo jokers are a very powerful resource and there's no reason to be stingy with them. Nobody at the table has a joker, it might be time for one. So kind of the get out of jail free card for the uh, system. So help and hindrance. Looks like uh, boon and bane or uh, advantage and disadvantage. Yeah, it looks like yeah. game plus one or game minus one. Yeah, very similar. And then secondary characters. So basically, yeah, the NPCs. Conflicts. So resolving a conflict. Uh, just to carry on the game, you and your friends, all states of action as usual, and at the end of the turn, the narrator may ask for a reaction roll to make a scene more interesting. So combat, opponents, facing the opponent, action turn, reaction turn. So things like rats, oh here's already yeah, just an example of how rats are statted out. So they've got quite a bit of stress. And then their actions, oh yeah, so yeah, you're rolling. So similar to uh, like Forbidden Lands or something, there's a um, action rolls for the uh, enemy. So they have random attacks that uh, are just generated through a d6 roll. And then all of these are described then. Stress during combat. So an action turn, attacking opponent reaction turn, multiple difficulties, victory and defeat. So leaving combat. On your turn, you can also make a roll of illusion Illusion <laughs> plus war to try to leave combat. Uh, opponent moves war buzz, so the wasps unleash a powerful and deafening buzz. So wasps sound useful. Weak spots. Weak spot is an unstable structure whereby you can knock over by rolling craft plus war. If you're successful, the opponent suffers two stress. Shooting. So range, oh, so they have kind of obstructed ranges, adjacent at short distance, within range, at long distance, and out of range, and then cover, which gives you, uh, yeah, negatives to the uh, attack, brawls, brawl opponents, knockout, a duel. Oh, so the dice pool the narrator uses depends on the talent and skill of the challenger. So four dice for inexperienced, five for skilled, six for excellent, seven for a famous duelist, and eight for a master duelist. So leading an assault, during an assault, winning and losing, rerolling. And then an optional rule, or two optional rules, Mis uh, mysterious challenger. The narrator, the narrator can choose to keep tensions even higher by creating their dice rolls unseen. And strong and weak points are optional. So conditions and decorum. So the conditions that can be applied to the character. I think we saw embarrassed, confused, hurt, scared, tired, sick, poisoned, and broken. Getting a condition when you fail a roll. When you want to gain a plus one, and when you reach a critical box, or re reach the crucial box, oh, I, on the um, your stress track, yeah. So you immediately suffer conditions. I think it's every three or four. Uh, dep 
pending. I don't know if the, the PC's stress tracks are different. And then removing a condition when you are safe and there's no immediate risk and a chance to rest. Nice, and here's the yeah, explanation of the conditions. General ones, decorum. Five levels of decorum. Uncouth, shabby, decent, elegant, and pompous. <laughs> Help and hindrance, losing decorum. And then raising your decorum from uncouth to shabby. Wash yourself. <laughs> Rules to live by. Shabby to decent, give yourself a good once over and well equipped, uh, and a well equipped bath. Decent to elegant. He requires elegant clothes, and then you pay a visit to a fancy barber. And elegant, <laughs> elegant to pompous requires gala clothes. Good luck becoming pompous. So little things and contracts, the concession and counterpart, and terrible, terrible things. So when the little things violate a counterpart, on top of the immediately losing the concession of the contract. They begin to draw bizarre and unbelievable, unbelievable events we call terrible, terrible things. Some have been attacked by huntsman spiders in the middle of a great gala, or had their weapons and armor crumble in the midst of battle. Interesting, yeah, so the contracts with your... Yeah, interesting, so the, yeah, these are the uh, yeah, contracts related to your your nation, your origin. I guess your, your folk, yeah, the type of folk. So star child, fairy wings. Earth, Judd in the junk. <laughs> Due to the hearth, the spark, drain, and draft. And counterpart, revenant, and far beyond. And then a little bit, it looks like a little bit of uh, narrative. And then personal contracts. So stipulating a personal contract. And then some more descriptions. So Wall Strider, Gold Thirst, Never Heard, Vainglory. Oh, the terrible, terrible things. It's a suffering one, making it worse, <laughs> making it stop. So here's a couple of examples. So level one, you're a victim of a theft. Level two, you tied your shoes and boots wrong. Level three, your weapon or item slips out of your hand. Level four, you get run over by a cart. <laughs> level five, your sworn enemy gains a form of leverage. A great advantage. Welcoming contract, stipulating a welcoming contract. So up, upside down, welcome, kindled welcome. Nice. And the equipment and wealth. So, first of all, uh, wealth represents an economic welfare, allowing you to access specific goods and services. So number of coins you have. So coins are extremely precious. So three coins will buy you elegant clothing. Yeah, I and mean, you must have to haul them around like manhole covers. So the levels of wealth are poor, middle class, well off, and rich. And then your character has starting wealth. Uh, number of coins are determined by your wealth level. So your starting wealth level that suits your character's prologue and your preferences. Recommend most characters in the group in this middle class with five coins in their pocket. Raising and lowering your wealth. Coins, earning coins and spending them. And crystals, an unofficial currency of the household. And here's an equipment list. A bumblebee glove <laughs> costs two. So what's our biggest price here? So jewels and yeah, this ranges here. So something like a carriage it would be six coins. Gadgets, weapons. Oh, I like, yeah. The abstractions, a fork or a half of a pair of scissors is a, um, a scissor is a mighty, as a mighty sword. I like how they draw, yeah. Something like this, like scissors as mighty swords. They're wielded individually. <laughs> so crab forks and all sorts of horrible things keys and hairpins nice and even a, a bolt yeah so half scissor a key a half scissor a cog pesh walking toothpick traveling nail brass knuckles a cutlery piece great scissors double bite a double bitted key cocktail spear <laughs> 
halberd key, a bolt, and a razor. Ooh, a razor. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is. And then ranged weapons. Well, they, they constructed firearms. Oh, I like that they incorporated keys in the rifles as well. Nice. Yeah, so it has a, a fantasy look with the still keeping the little fun theme of miniature everything. All right, and here's our history. So the story, well, I guess the background of when the story happens. The first household war. All of our background, wow. Look at that, look out for the swans, basically. <laughs> That's amazing. The gift, the high council. And then saga. So chapters, paragraphs, historical events, and advancement. So the saga, uh, yeah, so everything, I guess, takes place in the era of the fragile peace. Historical period, sadly destined to be remembered as a fragile peace. The purpose of the game goes beyond simply having fun together and living adventures. The main reason is to recreate the story of important characters whose names haven't been made, who haven't made it into the history books. A saga is made up of five chapters. Each chapter is roughly the equivalent of one year of a character's life. With key historical events, every paragraph in a single adventure takes place during a larger chapter and might be composed of one or more gaming sessions. As soon as you finish telling a paragraph, I recommend giving it a captivating title for the ages. Oh, interesting. Yes, you're kind of keeping a written, written account, so you're making a historical record. So chapter one, one paragraph, chapter two, two paragraphs. Oh, interesting, yeah. Talking about how to structure, you can change your roles, how your characters grow. So there's always some time off between chapters. The characters have some time to solidify their growth and transform their lived experiences and memories that last a lifetime. Additionally, whenever advancing to the next chapter, you gain new skill points as well as new traits and moves. And yeah, later they'll do advancement. Continue your perspective, the epilogue, paragraphs. A few more players. So more than five players. If your group has more than five players, I suggest you play more sessions within each paragraph. Give everybody some focus. So here's the historical events. The history, yeah, so. Examples, I guess, of their, yeah, of chapters and the paragraphs in the chapters. It's, yeah, that's a really interesting way to break up gaming sessions. You know, I've, they've seen people use the structure of like television episodes and things. Making it chapters and a hist history is interesting. Yeah, so this is an example. And then advancement. You have experience, achievement, scars, bonds, and reputation. All, all experiences on your character sheet may be called into play by either you or the narrator. Uh, and become a helpful or hindering, uh, depending on the circumstance. Experience examples. I climbed the great stairs. I became a parent. I was in the prison. Broke a leg. And character growth. Yeah, so each chapter you get two skill points and a move. In chapter three, two skill points and a trait. Wow. Far outside the house. Nice. Yeah, here's our map again that we folded out of the ma of the house. So, welcome to the house. And now they're going to explain. Yeah, the entry hall. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Historical events in the entry hall. Nice. So here's a background of yeah all of the the areas. The wheel of the year. Oh, here's their calendar. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Sam Hain. So they're using some. Uh, Interesting European, yeah, kind of reference. Look at that. We can have grand balls in the chandelier. Look at the dining room. The dining hall. Little forest of mushrooms, the waxy swale. In between realms, the piano. Wow. Yeah, the production is really nice. And some what I've read as well, the translation is very good too, because this book was produced both, both in English and uh, Italian. So um, sometimes you, you run into like uh, translations of French I've seen get a little rocky. And uh, even uh, some of the Scandinavian, the Swedish 
RPG, sometimes the translations are a little rough, so they don't, it's a little confusing with rules and things, but this seems to be very, very smooth indeed, and this may be due to their cooperation with Come On. That's some good English language editors. Some cupboard, a great window. Yeah, I like the, you know, significance, the, you know, how this house has, <laughs> every little feature of this house has grand significance. Look at the uh, fallen Christmas tree. The carpet planes <laughs> welcome us into the living room. Yeah, an abandoned house. So here's the living room, stair side, the Yule tree, <laughs> the sofa, <laughs> the bookshelf, Walford, <laughs> the Hearth Hearthworth family. Hmm. Yeah, the disappearance of the oh the fireplace. Yeah, disappearance of the master of the household, and then the small nations took over. So this is the master bedroom, one of the beautiful rooms of the upper floor. The upper floor has the top hallway, the master bedroom, the gangs of Beddingham, <laughs> the clock, the bureaucrat, the vanity. Bathroom. Oh, nice. An ocean. A constantly filling ocean in the bathtub. Or I guess a harbor. <laughs> Tuberdam. The moldy marshes and Tuberdam. The port. Nice. <laughs> Small ships on the uh, on the bathtub sea. Yeah, it just it's it's just so charming the way that this was handled, without being. Uh, you know, the, the look of it is not very cartoonish. It's taken, you know, like oddly seriously in its like little miniature way. Like a lot of those, you know, kids stories about the, the little people. The puddle. The great blade. Yes, oh, more dangerous areas. Skull riders. The sawdust waste. Getting to the rough parts. The deep down. All right, so that's all of our fluff and everything. We're into the first appendices. So this is opponents. So yeah, our kind of uh, bestiary for explaining uh, threat levels and everything and then different uh, keywords, traits, I guess they're calling them. Traits for the uh, opponents, weak spots. So here's roaches, hooligans, gendarmes, wasps, earwigs, centipedes. Duelist scouts, soldiers, common spider, hornet, beetle. Yeah, so it looks like every fifth on the stress track. Oh, yes, it varies, yeah, and every third. It varies. Each opponent's stress track is a little different. That's good. Some variety large spider, honor guard, master duelist, spurred centipede, golden backs. And then they have the uh, D6 attack. Cinder Knights. Golden Silk or Weavers. Net Spider. Lots of spiders and lots of centipedes. Giant centipede. Legs of the Huntsman Spider. That seems to be one of the worst. That's the, maybe the dragon of this setting. Alright, and second appendices. Introduction. Oh, though, so an, uh, an introduction adventure. So, Pride and Prejudice and Centipedes. So, giving you a little bit of. So, here's the locations and the NPCs. You can go through the scenes and you'll fight a centipede. Little index, and here is our character sheet at the end. So, through traits and moves and contracts, and then. Yeah, so it'll, it held, it's all meant to be folded in half. And then extended character sheets. Oh yeah, so yeah, this is the back. So there's two two two-sided pages that fold together. That's quite a character sheet. There's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of stuff to fold. Oh, I guess, no, this is, there we go. Yeah, so this is the um, extended. This is the one-sided, and then here's the two sides for the extended that folds in half. All right, so the classic and extended character sheets. 
Nice. All right, and a warm farewell. So another letter from the writer of these of these rules are Hermoso J. Hemingway. Outside the house, the outhold awaits. Oh, right. So here, there's the expansion. The outhold, the yard. We saw that one image of outside the yard. Wow. So there's our core rule book for household. Yeah, very interesting and very, you know, rules pretty straightforward, pretty light and nicely done. An interesting combination of, uh, you know, things we've seen before. Definitely a more modern system, you know, D6 dipole using some of the things um, that have been developed in, in you know, 5e or uh, things that, that like uh, Free League are doing. Okay, so let's take a look at, I guess this is the more advanced rules. So let's take a look at their adventure book real quick. So there's a starting adventure in the core book, and then this is the next book in the set that gives you adventures. And we'll just, without spoiling too much, just give you a sense of what's in here. Ooh, a little bit different art style there. That's a little anime <laughs> looking. So here's the contents, a series of noteworthy characters and adventures in the saga. So, oh, interesting. And they're breaking up into chapters and paragraphs. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so this is a very different structure for, uh, and I guess, so yeah, this could be an entire, because this is the, um, the saga of the uh, fragile piece. So this is, you know, what they're discussing here. This is playing it out through five chapters with up to three paragraphs in each chapter and an epilogue. So let's just give a quick flip through here. So the historians club, a little bit of timeline on the fragile piece. Here's our noteworthy characters all statted out. So I guess, yeah, you could be playing because they said, you know, famous characters. So may maybe, um, uh, you could play a pre-gen like somebody that was already established to have existed at this time or play uh, an original character of your own. And every every one of these notables has a prologue. I'll get you started. Nice. Yeah, so all started out notables. And I think this is a lot of um, who they made the miniatures of. The miniatures that were uh, included in this campaign were of all of these notable characters. So if you're playing one of them, you have your own miniature. Yeah, these are great, great variety. Yeah, and I like the kind of 19th century feel of things. So not, you know, overly steampunk or anything, the kind of limited uh, technology is the time period plus the scale, you know, it's a, uh, it makes things make more sense. You're not dealing with tablet PCs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These look like all, I remember seeing some of these miniatures. I think there may be in this uh, supplementary box or maybe even a miniature of one of these characters. And here is the adventure in the saga. So through all the chapters. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. So here's all the notables involved so we'll just give a quick flip don't want to spoil too much yeah they break everything down to the locations wow so each chapter yeah has locations and things that can happen interesting yeah so you can either play you know based on just reading through the setting and everything create your own history through here or follow through this entire book to give you a big variety. I'm sure you'll see the entire house, you know, through this series of adventures. <laughs> some animals. Yeah, really, really nicely done. Yeah, I like these big uh, spreads. Yeah, so they've already established in the world a lot of these uh, notable characters, the f kind of famous NPCs, and they show up. Oh yeah, so showing you where they show up and what parts and what locations. Chapter three. Interesting, and some tables to roll on. I like how they do 
d6 tables, but they're Roman numerals. Uh, maybe the die is Roman numerals too. Maybe that's why they did it. They, they used uh, the Roman numerals. And I like that they do four. <laughs> they're not quite Roman numerals because they do four with four strokes. Yeah, see chapter four, there it's not IV, it's I, 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 I. Nice. Give it a little difference, a little misunderstanding, a little lost in translation. And the climax. Nice, so yeah, there's a lot of different uh, different locations and things to deal with in each chapter. And it looks like um, there's enough variety, you know, a lot of these tables have enough variety that you're getting through multiple playthroughs. It looks like you could actually experience a, a different enough history if you go through it again with another group. You won't be completely uh, asleep. And then the epilogue. Oh no, the total fall of this place. Nice, and then an analytical index. So the fragile peace is a five year long period beginning with the institution of the so-called High Council and the ending of the shadow of a new of a new war appears. Uh, it is in these years so rife with old disagreements, great revolutions, and diplomatic incidents that the household history was made, and all these years are also the backdrop for all the adventures that you and your friends will play through. The book will lead you through the years of the Fragile Peace, following in the footsteps of 24 no noteworthy littlings. Saga of the Fragile Peace is an expansion. It contains a collection of characters and adventures to weave together through a great saga. The book has 24, uh, well, that's quite a few, 24 ready to play characters, six ready to play adventures, 60 adventure outlines to build your own saga, and a timeline of the household. So, an expansion book to go beyond that basic one. And then this is a yet another expansion. I guess we'll look at the back first. So this is, of course, the uh, practical guide of living inside the house. So more explanation of the uh, the nations of the household. Perhaps you are repeatedly puzzled over why the army of the realm is called Imperial. Or how did Valesia, Valesia uh, come to be named so peculiarly? You've certainly wondered about how the whirlpool under the great faucet in Tuberdam works to receive packages from every room in the house or about the teapot. It could be, uh, you could make a way to the palace of Fairy Yu. And why does Pennyworth Brigade uh, have only a fake penny and so forth? So this practical guide of living inside the house is an expansion uh, for the household consisting of many stories, fun facts, anecdotes, and close-up looks. In the book, you'll find additional information on every nation, new historical characters, new equipment, new rooms, so three new rooms, the porch, the kitchen, and the smaller bedroom. Ten mysteries for you to uncover and ten new contracts. Three opponents, including the terrible scorpion, six playable characters, five vocations, one uh, new animal companion, the snail, and eight maps of the main cities of the household. So let's give this a quick flip and again, the nice gold effects on that and the same, same finish on the covers and the nice wallpaper. <laughs> if you know the world, you're never a foreigner. So the contents are the realm, the hearth, the free dominions. So yeah, the additional information for each, the horde, new options, new gameplay options, the snail, the new characters and the household atlas. So just a quick idea. So written by the same, same narrator again. The porch. <laughs> On the porch with your snail. The realm. So there we go, ground floor. The unexplored kitchen. Realm politics. Nice, so yeah, some more history, more characters, fey nobility. Wallace, yeah. The armed forces of the realm. The golden backs. Centuries, the royal gendarme. The Trista Red. Golden Circle. House of Cards. Life in the realm. Fashion in the realm. 
poetry <laughs> institutions of the realm. So looking a little German. The triad from Unter. The kitchen, the burners, the sink. The kitchen looks to have survived pretty well. It's quite clean <laughs> for being abandoned. The pantry, the fridge. Oh, nice. Icicles of the fridge. And then here's the new areas of the hearth. I love the fallen over Christmas tree. Hearth politics, the families, and some more background of the uh, controlling families. Significance of names, armed forces of the hearth. So each nation's kind of military structure. Police of the hearth. Love. The church of safekeeping. So religion in the hearth. The Cinder Order. That's where we've got Cinder Knights. Cold Heart. Life in the Hearth. Some more costuming. Fashion. Institutions. Fencing in the Hearth. Dens in the Hearth. The Dead Mouse Den. Blue Flames. The Knights of the Carpet. <laughs> Sorry. I'm laughing way too much. Aren't they silly? names and so yeah i'm sorry if this yes, this really turned you off and if you've already clicked away i just thought it was a, a very interesting uh, uh way to kind of without dumbing things down too much making a um a, a less uh a, yeah just a, a a fun a fun setting hunters and handlers the union duncan's fox gang city in between so the free dominions more information there's their upper floor Politics of the Three Dominions, so that the Three Dominions are corporations, the Symposium, and the Gendarme are the Armed Forces, the Edge Guard, Porcelain Army, the Freers, Bathlantis, <laughs> Institutions and Freedoms, Ooh, a university near the bathtub. Dens of the Three Dominions, Dominions, Art and Theater, Fencing, Free Domains, so I guess they each have the different fencing style, Thimble and Blackwater, Chemical Wonders, Life in the Free Dominions, Fashion, of course, because I can see, through the Looking Glass, the smaller room, smaller bedroom, yes, this is the new area, the dollhouse. And then the Horde in the basement, a little bit more background, the Five Provinces, the Slugan Nobility, the Skull Riders, Skull Rider Hierarchy, ooh, Idol Worship, the Spider Cult, of course there's a Spider Cult in the basement, Courtiers and Witches, Life in the Horde, the Ceremonies, Fashion, yes, yeah, so each are kind of themed a little bit. Regionally forgotten ones. Scorpion. All right, that's the new new adversary. Is the scorpion? And it's interesting. The uh, the pincers are a critical opponent, and uh, the sc whole scorpion is an extreme opponent. So you may fight uh, just a leg, or you may fight the whole thing. The armed forces, militia, or Persian influence, Black Legion. Janissaries of the Great Blade, the Mirandola Academy, Dens of the Horde, Assassins, oh nice, the pen quill, <laughs> the quill pen for assassination, the Medje, Medje of Sunset, and then Spider Cult. And then new options in the appendices. Oh, a swarm of spiders as a new adversary. So new options. So warrior, soldier vocation, adept as a scholar vocation, blue flame as a hunter vocation, bandit as a criminal, and medje as a duelist vocation. Then our snail stats. And then the new characters, who I'm sure had <laughs> miniatures produced as well. Yeah, so of course, like the previous ones, they all have their stats and their prologue. 
So you can play established pre-gen characters or create your own. But it's nice to have so many examples. And the household atlas. So here's the maps of the other regions. Or well, the cities, I'm sorry. That's like the major cities, they said. Astravia, Astravia, low, low Light and High Light, Walford, Chesterfield, Beddingham, <laughs> Tuberdam, Tuberdam. <laughs> I love the bathtub. Isaiah, Al Sahir, Valencia, and our analytical index. All right, so that is the three books for the set. So yeah, so this this kind of exclusive box set that they did is these three books in the uh, and the GM screen and the map in this nicely produced box. So yeah, that's why it was so heavy because it was all books. So yeah, that was really nice production. It's really, and it's very fun. It sounds like it, it wouldn't take much to uh, absorb enough of that background and to uh, uh, keep people entertained with, uh, with that setting. So let's take a look. So this is the kind of stretch goals box. So I believe there's a lot more maps in here, the dice and uh, some cards, I believe as well. So maybe cards that, you know, represent the uh, aces and things that you hold. So yeah, the, this box is uh, yeah completely. It's you know similar in appearance, a little bit different in hue, you know, similar in appearance to be a book box, a little bit taller, but that may be because oh well, yeah oh there are a ton of miniatures. <laughs> I guess as part of the set, yeah you get all the miniatures too. So this is just a simple box lid. It's a you know, decent construction, uh, simple box. Here's our our little satin or velvets, our little velvety drawstring bag for our little dice. Wow, look at those. So. There's the household logo. So this was a stretch goal as well. And then the set of dice. So what are they giving you? 10 dice. Yeah, that should be all you're going to ever need to roll. And they, oh yeah, these are nice. So here's our six sided die with our four on it. So yeah, rolling this. And then here's the dice with the, uh, the suits on it, the fields. So you have a home. And then you have the household logo. So maybe one and six, roughly. And then the four suits around the ends. Yeah, so these are nice. They should rest comfortably inside this very tiny little satin bag. Yeah, perfect. So this was, yeah, uh, a little bonus. And so here's cards. So here's our aces, I think. So you have something to physically hold on to. And this box is interesting. <laughs> the way they're using it doesn't seem very efficient and yeah, a little, you can tell the, the come on influence of uh, vacuum trays and things. So yeah, here's your aces of the different suits. So yeah, I am guess based on, you know, how you're, you're benefiting or maybe even your character type. So there's four of each of the aces to hold on to. And here's jokers of the different suits. Nice. So yeah, physically you can hold on to these cards as a benefit. Uh, so you can, yeah. So this is, uh, you know, kind of the, the points economy, similar to momentum or different things in other games. And I guess well, let's go straight for the miniatures. Yeah, this, mm. so there's, there's a bunch of cards in the middle here. So these are, they look like kind of board game quality miniatures. Wow, I didn't realize so many of these came with this set. I thought it was a, because uh, I think it was like the complete set. And a lot of these were stretch goals as well. I believe there was only one that was unlocked. I think, I believe this one uh, was unlocked from the very beginning. It was kind of the, the one that they were definitely going to produce. But yeah, they made, I think about 450,000 was the final total on this campaign. So they were quite successful. And the high production values, um, of the components themselves, I think, you know, were pretty compelling. Oh, these are actually on the outside. So confused. There, these are some mini cards on the outside. So here's our miniatures. I'll just kind of, instead of taking them all out, give you a nice shot on the camera. So these are a lot of the, um, so we had 24 of the named kind of noted characters. So here is, looks like 12. So half of those. 
So maybe they didn't do every one, but wow, there is quite a few miniatures in here. So every one of the folk of the different nations. Yeah, so already for these adventures, yeah, you would have these to put on the table. And so let's get a close-up of one. Yeah, so the, the detail is not bad. They're definitely, you know, board game, a little bit nicer, I guess, than board game miniatures, because these are quite small. 25 millimeter but the details okay it's not too soft and it's fun you know they, they have kind of you know scenic bases and things these aren't so super generic they're kind of dynamic poses for each of them you know imitating the illustrations so the bases of each of them have some fun details and things yeah I can't remember if they did any of the uh, the bugs and monsters and things I guess those could get quite large <laughs> you know, to do a giant plastic rat. So wow, yeah, so quite a, uh, a set of miniatures included in the set. And so they kept unlocking these. So yeah, we got 12, 12 miniatures unlocked throughout the campaign. And then here's the cards. Oh, so these are just, yeah, your listed uh, just so you have the mechanics for things, your skills. So acrobat gain a free reroll. Yeah. So, well, they're not they're not alphabetical, so I don't have to keep them in any particular order. But yeah, here's all of your skills on individual little cards, and it seems to be one of each. So, and your companions. Yeah, just so you have a card that has the. Uh, th this is nice because you're usually writing these things on your character sheets, and because there's one of them, maybe you can just. You know, go through, and then you can, you can copy the text of this. Or if there's not a lot of uh, people with the same skills, you can just have these next to you. But uh, yeah, the different skills and then traits, the soldiers. So you're just basically a breakdown of all of the mechanics of everything. Your stern presence is your beetle trait. <laughs> Yeah, and they're nice, you know, get little... Oh, there we go, and they've named them as well. Yeah, so these are all trait cards, not skills. Yeah, these are all traits. Cute little antenna is a trait. <laughs> yeah, so let's see here. There we go. They're, they're, oh, that's nice. They, that's nice they changed the back, so it's very easy to sort them. So here's all your trait cards with all those stats, or all those uh, mechanics written out. And then we have our contract cards nice so yeah kind of the the mechanics of the concession and then the counterpart of your your different contracts and nice with the wax seal on there that's nicely done and then your move cards so the moves that you gain by your various professions oh and these are nicely illustrated as well scholar moves Bodyguard moves. Criminal moves. Duelist moves. Yeah, so each of the basic jobs. Fly like a bumblebee. And just basically gives you easy access to what that means instead of having to look it up. So this will save you some time. And an original blank card to write an original move. This will just save you some time flipping through the book and, uh, you know, players can dig through these as opposed to everyone having to pass around because this is really nice the the deluxe edition yeah you, know, you may not want to get beaten up at the table because it's really nicely produced so these will save the wear and tear on your books all right so we can fit these back in here yeah this is a very common like use <laughs> of space in a box so their influence may have made this less yeah less than it could have been so here's our maps i believe we have some so similar yeah the same quality of the map that was in the uh, basic set oh so yeah these are so all the city maps that we saw inside the expansion book that's what these are so paper versions of the city maps oh good but they're two-sided so here's the highlight and the low light so we get a little bit of uh, not a uh, waste of space here we get dual use out of the maps yes there we go, yeah, so Walford on one side and Chesterfield on the other. 
Chesterfield as in sofa. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. the fallen Christmas tree. I don't know why that amuses me so much. The area under the fallen Christmas tree, Benningham. Nice. Yeah, so all of the, uh, what is that? Eight, yeah, the eight different city maps on four two-sided sheets. So yeah, decent there. They won't take uh, much of a beating, but they're nicely produced and they've got a little bit of a coating on them, but not that the heavy kind of stuff you have for tactical maps. And here are some more, oh, a big bunch. Yeah, that's all the rest of this is. So here's a bundle of what it looks like character sheets. Oh, wow. Yeah, so here's, this is a, a uh, pre-printed, the, uh, what were they calling it? The expanded, expanded character sheet that folds like a passport. So here's your character art, right? <laughs> your signature, your homeland. You have to get your quill pen out and fill this out. Yeah, so these are really nice. These are nice uh, uh, cardstock character sheets. Um, they're not coated heavy enough that you could put anything erasable, so... Yeah, these are really nice quality, but you'd have to really love your group to hand them one of these. Well, let's see how many they can give you. So blank ones. Oh, this is this is actually pretty good. Yeah, so blank ones you get four. Four of these blank double-sided. So this is what was in the end of the book. And they'll, they'll flatten out so you can color copy them. And then, wow, but these are really nice. They're really heavy. And then here's the pre, so same quality, pre-printed of the pre-gens of the known characters. So, wow, yeah, so this is the 24. <laughs> this is a lot of pre-gen characters. So you can instantly start playing this. I mean, just explain a little bit of the setting and have players decide where they want to be from and what kind of uh, character. And then you'll probably be able to find them within here. It seems like a huge number. And then you're playing someone that's kind of, you know, already part of the history that they've prepared so you don't have to explain your way into them into there so much and even the prologue is written out so these are two-sided so there's your character art and everything and here's all their stats and then yeah you'll you fill in because you'll be writing you know there you'll be creating their memories as you're playing the character but everything else is written out I guess just yeah you can equip them differently and then their experiences will accumulate and they don't have, oh, they don't give them a default decorum, so. I guess because that changes, right? You can move up and down. And then inventory and everything. Yeah, so still, oh, it would be <laughs> really hard to watch this get abused. So it should either be coated heavily enough, I don't know, maybe laminate it with a score or something so you can do, you know, dry erase or something. I don't know. But look at all of these. So Dimitri and Ira and Gemma. And Tubo, well, I think we saw his miniature. Aiden, a detective. Gwen, a researcher. Malika, a doctor, a plague doctor. Pierre, a diplomat. Humphrey, a lone mouse. Icarus, a scout. Litha, a guide. Omar. A bounty hunter, Gunther, a cheater, Jocelyn, a courtesan. Yeah, these are all from the book, Mika the Thug. And yeah, I guess these were two separate. They might have just done it because of the, the crease. Sienna, the thief, Ernest, the hero, Get the art in there, Santiago, the swashbuckler. Sioban, the virtuoso. Yulia, the capitano. Floyd, the rancher. <laughs> I guess mouse rancher. <laughs> Hannah, the veterinarian. Priscilla, the street performer. Sarah, the aristocrat. Quite buggy. Achilles, the warrior. Baron the Adept, it looks like Ash Knight. May the Blue Flame. Oh yeah, so these are the yeah from the expansion. 
Alexine, Alexine, the Bandit, Vega, the Magi. Yeah, these are the expanded uh, vocations. Petriolo, the Traveling Merchant. Wow, so that is a lot. This is oh, that was a lot of production of the pre-gen pre-gen guys, but you you are ready to go. Yeah, you basically just looking through those, you are ready to uh, play. So yeah, if your if your group is comfortable with pre-gens and you really want to kind of you know immerse yourself in the setting and you're comfortable enough, or or maybe not comfortable <laughs> enough with uh, creating your own based on. Uh, you know what? What uh, the explanation of the the setting? So yeah, we've got a lot of maps and things though. So yeah, this is interesting. Very command style, an okay use of space. I mean, things are going to go back in here. Okay, it looks like. Oh, I didn't. I mean, this map didn't get in there. Yeah, I like the caramel wrapper on the other side of that. That was good. So yeah, the nice production quality. Uh, these are um, well, not quite. Yeah, these are just. Uh, uh, a coded card stock. They're not the playing card uh, quality, like the bicycle co quality poker cards. But uh, they're decent. Uh, they're decent quality. So everything was produced well. The miniatures look decent. Everything and the, the dice were nice and clean. The um, you know each of the sides looks very is very well screened. So no cheapy low quality production on the. Uh, the dice either so yeah overall very nice and a very kind of sweet but interesting like complicated like it has a, enough of a level of an adult and enough a level of sweetness and humor that i think it might be a nice onboarding for younger rpg players and it gives them you know it's not just combat it's not just dungeon crawling and it's not just grand balls and uh uh, you know, courtly, <laughs> courtly intrigue and romance. So there's a, a lot in here, and uh, I think any any you know, teenager interested in history, but not crazy about like a fantasy setting or wanting something a little different. If you're got a, a Jane Austen fan or something, I think uh, there's stuff in here that could be a good hook. So, yeah, so my hopes, uh, I have teenage daughter hopes that <laughs> this may be something that makes it to the table. And I was just really curious about uh, Two Little Mice. Um, and once I got associated with Come On and we're going to be their RPG arm, uh, I was uh, interested in following them and uh, supporting kind of what they were working on. But this is quite a set. This is quite a uh, impressive set of uh, books. Really nice production values. Um, I, you know, haven't read through everything, but everything that I read, um, translation was good. So uh, they're they're working. Their partnerships kind of seem to have paid off, and a really nice, really nice little magnetized set there. It's got that wrap around. The cover is like a total wrap around, and then magnets here and here. So yeah, so household RPG. So if you like this kind of fantastical cute scale so there are you know the monsters are small pests you know to humans uh they're just pests and to the but to these nations and these characters they're horrible monsters to be slayed uh if you enjoy this kind of thing uh, i think this is a really good approach a really good take on that style of the the little ones in an abandoned house i just it, it's just charmed the heck out of me and i really like the um the look of uh, the production of it. It was very, very fantastic and very beautiful. And it's you know, kind of a nice lush production. So uh, this is Household RPG. So you may or may not <laughs> have been completely interested, but uh, yeah, it's a fun, uh, a fun uh, thing that they did. Just not a great, they could have maybe just done this box differently. So you weren't, they didn't have to do it in this bookcase because they don't look great together <laughs> they don't match completely together they're different sizes and uh, the different printing and everything but uh, this this set though is uh, quite impressive and I guess this went this went out to everybody you know that backed things for stretch goals so you got this and not necessarily this so they didn't have to to match because they just uh, you could basically have a pledge where you're just getting the core book not the two expansions and then there was uh, you could add on some of the components that were in here and plus get the um uh get this depending on the, the pledge level so this was two little mice an italian studio 
Uh, they had just completed, uh, I guess in May, this summer they completed um, Outgunned. So cinematic action role play is the next that's coming from them. So I'm really interested in following the studio. I like the production, very simple, straightforward rules. I love the, the metaphor of uh, telling a history with chapters and paragraphs. So writing out your uh, history. And I, I hope this gets some more support. I hope they uh, are writing and fleshing out more of this world as they suggested on the back of one of the expansions through the keyhole, there's the, the yard they still have to uh, explore. So the outworld of the yard may be uh, the next expansion books that come for this. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is really fun to uh, to go through. Really gorgeous, really, really well produced. This may not be to your taste. This may not be the kind of game you'd uh, be totally interested in, in playing, but I think they, for what this is, they did a really great job. It's really charming. It has the, you know, the charm of an indie RPG but with a uh, much higher production quality. And I know this is in a huge studio. They were associated with Come On. It's not a huge studio, but this has a you know really high-end indie RPG quality uh, that I like. I like the, uh, the, the combination of things. So thanks so much for joining me. And uh, give this video a like if you made it all the way through and are enjoying what's going on. Uh, subscribe on uh, YouTube. We'll uh, get you notifications when we post new videos. We do live streams on Friday nights of our RPG sessions. We have the weekly, which happens on Thursday nights, uh, North American time, which is our kind of weekly roundup of uh, what's going on on the tabletop uh, in, the, in the news in wargaming, board gaming, uh, TTRPGs. And uh, if you really like what we're doing and want to keep seeing more of it and uh, have us uh, uh, support us, please visit patreon.com slash upturntable. And then Upturn Table, of course, on all social media. UpturnTable.com is the website. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.